Oh, hi. Sorry. I was just reading the release notes on 9.4. There are a lot of them. Hence, the trilogy. Uh, in this episode, or sorry, in this next video from Information First, we are going to feature the administrative functions, hence the title, The Administrator Strikes Back, of Content Manager 9.4. Now, there are many changes and improvements in this product. The release notes is 57 pages in length and uh, quite interesting read. Uh, no dugongs, though. I didn't see any dugongs in that reading material. That being said, uh, I have chosen three user or three administrator features here that I think you would like to see, and they are listed here. So metadata capture is one that I want to show. Custom users is a really great feature we discuss a lot in training, and the recycle bin is a much requested um, feature, and I'm glad to see it in the product. Again, this is a little bit, caught me a little bit by surprise. Uh, what I'm going to do here first is set up um, a future endeavor. I'm going to open up Microsoft Word. <clears throat> it's over here. Uh, let me bring it over in the foreground. Create a new blank document. Now, I don't know how many of you actually use this, but this is a little bit of a setup for the next video. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to give it a title. I'm going to say uh, episode two. Episode two. The administrator strikes back. All right, I'm going to put in some text. Got my text in there. Okay, so this is what someone might do in a normal Word document. Now, raise of hand, show of hand, how many of you actually fill out the document properties? Now, they are here, and I'm going to bring out the full advanced properties, and I'm going to give this one a title. I'm going to call this, um, what do they call the movies? Uh, un, untitled uh, Richard's Script. I think this is what, you know, like when Stallone is thinking of Rambo 5 or whatever version he's up to. It might be a untitled S Stallone script. Uh, subject could be, um, this could be uh, space and moving things with mind. All right. Just keeping with the themes that I have going on here. Let me fix my typo um, I could come in here and I could put in some keywords I can do Star Trek uh, Enterprise uh, oh wait sorry wrong space movie just kidding uh, Wars comments uh, my latest and greatest all right now I'm gonna do a okay and now I'm gonna go to my save as and I'm going to put this on my desktop. So I'm going to browse to my desktop. Now, notice it picks up the title here. Now, that's exactly what I had put in here. But I might call this, you know, secret script. Got my, my you know why I type so bad on these videos? The microphone is right over top of my keyboard. So my hands get in there and they're not on the right keys. So that's why I make so many typo mistakes. Uh, I'm, I'm really a really good speller and, and typist. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and save this on my desktop. And there we go. I've got my secret script as my title. But remember, I populated those document properties. So you're going to have to hang in there to a little later in the video. Uh, and I'll show you how that comes into play. That being said, what are we going to talk about today? First thing I want to talk about, this is administrator focus. So <clears throat> One of the things you'll notice as an administrator, if I go into my administration tab and my system options, you will find that gone are the tabs. So that uh, plethora of tabs across the top of the system options has been replaced with a navigational bar down the left. I personally like this. Again, another great improvement to the product, kind of bringing it up to modern times and modern design considerations these days. And as you flip through, uh, you will get options for each of the tabs. Now, notice some of the options you may see on the tabs might have changed. There are a few new ones. I will discuss those in a future and upcoming video, um, not in the scope of this particular video here, but there are some little options, for example, around my workflow and actions right here. There are a few more options that you can adjust, but we'll talk about those in an actions-focused video that a lot of people are asking for. Now, this is also the new layout that they are using on the record type. So if I go into uh, modify my record types, not my jurisdictions, uh, but click on, say, the document review, bring that one up, <coughs> 
excuse me, pardon me, you can see now record type properties have the navigational toolbar on the left and the uh, tabs, of course, as you select them, will change the display options. So again, design considerations, con design standardization. I really like it uh, and I think it's great. Now, the next thing I want to show you while I'm here is the metadata capture. So some of the stuff that I set up there had to do with that metadata capture. So notice I've already in a previous attempt at making this video, have set this to set the title from the content property. But notice there is also set the title from the title name and do not set the title when auto proofing. So the default box is this set the title from the appropriate content property. Now they've really expanded what that what that says before in earlier versions of content manager, it was simply something along the lines of um, use all metadata to profile the document, something like that. I, I forget the exact wording. But let's see how this is going to come into play. Uh, I just need to minimize my other users opening and let's find that document that I created. It should be on my desktop. It was called secret script. Uh, for some reason, my word documents are not, I'm just going to move it right here. Open back my content manager. That's why I wanted to move it a little bit further, but let's just see what happens. Now, remember I am grabbing this subject here that you can see secret script. I'm going to drag it into content manager and let go. And lo and behold, I'm going to select my document review record type or review document record type. Click OK and look what happens. The proposed title is space and moving things with my mind untitled Richard's script. Interesting. So this has happened. This came up in our recent expert week. Shout out to all those attendees. Thanks for coming. Um, you can see that the title of the file name or what a lot of people perceive the title to be the file name was script or secret script. When I dragged and dropped that it picked up not only does it look like it picked out my comments, but it also picked up the title that I wrote in the document properties. Um, anything else picked up in there? Not too much. And that was pretty, pretty good. I'm going to cancel this right now. I'm not going to save those changes. I'm going to go into that review document metadata uh, capture section. And I'm going to now say, set the title from the file name. Click OK, go back to my secret script, drag and drop that into content manager select the review document record type, click OK, and don't you just love it when a plan comes together? That's not what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to ignore all that. Uh, let me <laughs> let me just say, uh, I don't know if I needed to refresh that. That's kind of funny. Let's see what happens. Let me go back. Let me say no to the save. Um, in my excitement in getting this video out, maybe I was just a little too quick at reading that. Metadata capture. <coughs> Um, okay. Oh, yeah, you know, take away my video license. Look at that exam email. I was making the setting changes on the wrong field. So that's my, my bad. It's, it's Friday afternoon. It's like quarter to five. I'm so sorry. Okay. So that was fun. So any of you who watch any of you experts that are watching, I did that on purpose for, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right. So we have set the title from the appropriate property. We saw the effects of that. Let me refresh that and put select the title from the file name. That's what I want to do. Click OK, grab my secret script, drag and drop it in this time. And lo and behold, when I grab the review document record type, click OK. And there, that's what I was expecting the first time. You know what? I usually I would have uh, I would have like stopped the video and I would have done it again. Remember, I do these videos straight from I do these videos live to tape, so I don't I don't try not to edit. I hate editing, so I try to do it all in one swoop. When these little things go wrong, so if it's bad enough, I will restart the recording. I don't want to do it this time. You guys saw what happened. We learned something. Emails on top, documents are on the bottom. But that's the difference between capturing the metadata that I put in the document properties versus just capturing the file name. So I really think that's a handy feature. <clears throat> Um, I would continue on with this particular save, put it in a folder, click OK, and off it goes. So that's an example of dragging and dropping and modifying the metadata capture. So uh, really important, really powerful stuff. I'm just going to go back in there for one second because there was a lot of interesting things on there uh, as well that I wanted to show you. So let's go back into, let me open up my window just a little bit because I'm done with the drag and drop. Let's go to my record types, my review document. That's funny. That's something for you guys to like share with your friends. Tweet, the guy in the video made a mistake. 
Um, just kidding. Anything to get it, anything to get subscribers. All right. Um, so on the metadata capture, what I was showing you was some of the other options here. So with respect to documents, created and modified dates can be picked up. Author, keywords, notes can all be captured. Uh, up here in terms of email, you'll notice there is uh, create the author from the sender, create the addressees from the two, create contacts from the CCS. So there are a lot of options on your email, a lot more expanded options from what we had in earlier versions. So I really think this is a great feature and something you want to pay attention to when you are uh, looking at your electronic record types. And maybe you even have a record type that is specifically designed to capture email. So um, something that will help you as well. So moving on from that embarrassing little demo, but I, I think it was effective. So I'm just going to cancel out of that one. Uh, and we'll move to our second one, custom users. So I'm going to go to the full screen just so we can get a little bit better view of that. Uh, shrink my head down a little bit after that embarrassing moment and figure out why you can't see it right now. So let me just activate VMware and there you go. So what I want to show you here is the concept of using and or creating uh, different user types. So for those of you way back in Trim, remember Trim, Dugongs, all that fun stuff? Remember, we could uh, basically create any crazy user we wanted. We could just go in, uh, grab a user, give them a profile, and then we could add and subtract permissions as we wanted to. Well, that changed when the licensing model changed. When they started selling administrators, records coordinators, knowledge workers, inquiry workers, etc., that all changed, and we were in a position where we could only downgrade roles. We would start at a role and downgrade. So one of the things that people have done to get around that was to create what we called maybe a proxy profile uh, using the profile or using the position as a profile. We would then customize that user and then other people could use it. So they've kind of incorporated that functionality into the default user type. So I'm going to click on my administration tab, go to my system options, and then I'm going to click on my user types. Now we have our standard records manager, records coordinator, but look at this. I've gone ahead and I've already created a new employee user type. Uh, new employee user type custom one. I believe you're allowed five or six. I'm not too sure. Um, it's around that number. It's not huge, uh, but you can create a, in this case, I created a new employee custom user type one, and I could go ahead and modify and make changes as I see fit. Click OK. It tells me changes will not be affected unless someone signs on. That That is OK. And let me go through the motions of how you create a new one. So I would go back to my system options. I would go into my user types. I would then go to the new button and let's call this a retiree. I don't know, I'm making something up. A retiree, if that's even a word. And a retiree could be based on a records manager role. I'm going high because I want to downgrade. So I just want to give you that illusion of what I'm doing. A retiree, records manager based, click OK. Now let's turn off a bunch of functionality. We don't want this retiree to be able to do. I would go through, do my due diligence, click OK, save this retiree click OK again and now I've created that user type. How can we see this in action? Let's go all on over to our locations and all all staff I should say and let's say that Peter Rabbit it's time to retire. So I can go into Peter Rabbit's profile go into this profile tab and down here where it says using a profile of I'm going to turn that off but I'm going to select their user type from a records manager and you can see I have my new employee and I have my retiree. Go ahead and click that retiree profile. It will then use all of the options set by the retiree and click OK. This is fantastic. I just did an expert week. Shout out to all my peeps that came to that expert week. Uh, and if you've watched this far, thank you. Wasn't that embarrassing? Anyways, um, for those of you who were at the expert week, we, we talked about how we can use a position type, make something called profile end user and go ahead and customize it. This beats that. Now you can do those customizations in the system. Now you are limited to, like I said, five or six, but maybe five or six are all you need. And if you needed more, of course, you can then still use the idea of using a profile position. So I think this is really great. And the fact that it's built in, managed by the system administrator um, and, and visible to the administrator is a fantastic feature. So I do like that one. Score two points for MicroFocus. Great improvements in the product. Um, what was the third thing? Short term. Ah, oh, the recycle bin. That's what it was. Yes. I almost forgot what I was going to show you. All right. For this fun, I'm going to open up my other user and this is Pat. Hi, Pat. Pat has been busy this week and has created a few records. If I refresh the search results for Pat, uh, we got some records here. We've got an audit log. 
Uh, we've got an expense report for September. We've got a Wednesday demo. We've got a test. So let's say that in reviewing the week's work or heck, even the day's work, maybe Pat realizes they put in something twice. So what Pat can do now is highlight this particular expense report, right click on it and oh, it's off screen. Let me move this up a little bit for you guys. Let me move this up a little bit for you guys. Let me right click again move down to the send to and look at oh no where is it uh, send to man oh oh that's the wrong record type let me just see it here i want you guys to be able to see what i can see there it is can you see it you can good okay i found one all right so let's say I've created this test document and I created an error. In this case, you can see I maybe I didn't attach the, the, the attachment or whatever. For whatever reason, I want this one deleted. I can right click on it, go to the send to options. And lo and behold, we now have a recycle bin option. So this will now ask me for why am I recycling it or why do I wish it recycled? I can go through and say this is a draft item. I can click OK and away it goes. Let me see if I can do it again on this web demo. If I right click on that one, send it to the recycle bin has gone. I think it's already been filed. I was doing some other things with these record types. I believe this one, I don't want to like not leave you hanging on what's happening. Uh, this one is in the process of being reviewed. That's what's going on with that one. So I'm not going to touch that particular record. Uh, let me go down to expense two. right click. We got a few one of those. Okay. So what happens when things are have, or at least have been sent to the recycle bin? Uh, what I will then do is jump on over to my administrator role and lo and behold, the administrator can go to the search tab, the records drop down and look for a recycle bin search. Click OK. And sure enough, we come back and we see we have three items or what am I saying? I'm counting wrong. We have two items in the recycle bin. Now I've exposed the recycle reason. Now the administrator can quickly skim that list, see which ones should be kept, which ones should not be kept. And now let's say this particular draft item I do want to keep. Maybe this was sent an error. I could right click on this and remove it from the recycle bin, which puts it back into play. But this one, if I want to keep it and I accept the reason for the deletion, then I just leave that one alone and within 30 days, it'll be removed. How do I know 30 days? Because that is in my system options under the record tab. And we can see right down here, automatically empty the recycle bin when records have been there longer than 30 days. Maybe if I'm a efficient records manager, I might make that five days. And in five days from now, that record would be removed. Excellent um, feature for the recycle bin. Excellent administrative changes in Content Manager 9.4. Thank you if you watched through the error. That was kind of funny. Thought I'd leave it in the video. We're only human. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you're a first time viewer, subscribe. We're trying to get our subscriber count up to 100. We are so close. Like the video. And as a reminder, we are giving away a rocket book. For those of you who post a comment, we will draw a name at the end of the season in and around December and the winner will receive a rocket book. Remember, rocket book allows you to take notes. You can see my notes in here. And then with your mobile device, simply take a picture of the book and or the page, I should say, and it will send it to a location of your choice, such as an email account, a OneDrive, Dropbox, etc. And you can have it sent there. So again, I'll just go back to the overlay to review what we talked about today. Thanks for tuning in. I'm going to do another video in a moment. It's going to be announcements. We got an expert week coming in Vancouver. More on that later. And as always, uh, you can, of course, see the prequel to this movie, uh, the 9.4, which has already hit 100 views. So thanks for that. And on the right, you will see the link to the next video, which hopefully will be either the announcements and or episode three, Return of the Web Client. Thanks for watching.